Welcome everybody to Brothers Just Searching Podcast Devotional. We're going to open up the Word of God today in Deuteronomy to see what the people of Israel were doing in their time. So, whenever Moses decided by, by the Word of God to, to lead the people out of Israel, Israel, they had been slaves for a very long time. And they, they got content in their slavery. So that became a problem whenever they entered into or approached the land that God had promised them. So Israel refused to enter the land. So I'll, I'll start off with a, a passage, um, Deuteronomy chapter 1, starting at verse 19. Then we set out from Harob. And went through all that great and terrifying wilderness that you saw on the way to the hill country of the Amorites, as the Lord our God commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barnea, and I said to you, You have come to the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. See, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go, take up possession, as the Lord the God of your fathers has told you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Then all of you came near to me and said, Let us send men before us that they may explore the land for us and bring us word again of the way by which we must go up and the cities into which we shall come. The thing seemed good to me, and I took twelve men from you, one man from each tribe, and they turned and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Eshcol, and spied it out. And they took in their hands some of the fruit of the land, and brought it down to us, and brought us word again, and said, It is a good land that the Lord our God is giving us. So they came to the land that that the Lord promised to them, and they were hesitant. They They had commands from the Lord to go and take possession of the land. But they said, you know what, actually, let's, let's spy it out. Let's just see what's, what's happening over here. What, what are they doing over there? And so they brought back fruit from the land, and they said it was a really good land. They, they saw that, that it was plentiful and that it was a, a, a good land. So going into to verse 26, it says, Yet you would not go up but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you murmured in your tents and said, Because the Lord hated us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to give us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Where are we going up? Our brothers have made our hearts melt, saying, The people are greater and taller than we. The cities are great and fortified up to heaven. And besides, we have seen the sons of the Anakim here. Then I said to you, Do not be in dread or afraid of them. The Lord your God, who goes before you, will himself fight for you, just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes, and in the wilderness where you have seen how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son, all the way that you went until you came to this place. Yet in spite of this word, You did not believe the Lord your God, who went before you in the way to seek you out a place to pitch your tents, in fire by night and in the cloud by day, to show you by what way you should go. So God had been leading them for for many years, all the way from Egypt to the land that they had been promised. So they had years of, of blessings and miracles right from the hand of God, yet whenever they were, were told to, to go and take possession of what was promised to them, they, they were afraid. But uh, God told them not to be dismayed and not to fear. So because of their, their fear and because of their hesitancy, Lord said, this is not the people that's going to enter into the land, but your children. So they went back into into the wilderness and wandered again. So 
where did they go? So they, they went to two different places. They went to Seir, which was the land gained by the sons of Esau. So in the land of Seir, there were men just like the Amorites and the, uh, and the Anakim. So they were great men and they were, they were strong. But the Lord God, he gave the, the land to the sons of Esau. No matter how terrifying the people who were dwelling there seemed. So they had passed through that land and they said, and, and the Lord told them, you will not take possession of this land because it's been given to the sons of Esau. They also passed through Ar, which the Lord gave to the sons of Lot. So that land was also um, inhabited by, by great men, by, by tall, tall men who were <laughs> really, uh, they weren't the guys you'd want to mess with. Yet the Lord delivered that land to the sons of Lot. So the people of Israel, Israel they didn't go into the land that the Lord promised them. So they wandered back in the wilderness and they looked at all the land that, that the Lord had given to other great men. And the Lord told them that that wasn't going to be their land. So they wandered in the wilderness for 38 years, uh, the Bible says, until they came back to the, the valley of Eshcol. And so whenever they, they, had, uh, they had wandered in the wilderness again, they came back after the, the warriors, the old men, had died off and the new generation had come back. So at this point, the, the sons of the men who were afraid to, to conquer the, the land that God had given them, they were actually the ones that were going to go into the land and possess it. So the Israelites... They compared themselves to the current inhabitants of the promised land and were dismayed. But they had forgot that the Lord had brought them through many, many trials. He had already delivered them from the Egyptians, which were a great nation. They were very powerful, but the Lord had done miracles to bring them out of that land into a new land. And so... So whenever they, they finally got back to, to the valley of Eshcol, they had two kings that the first one, um, King Sion, they, they had sent a message to him saying that we were just going to pass by the road and we were going to buy food and buy water and it was going to be peaceable. We just going to the land that the Lord promised us. But... God had hardened King Sion's heart and he, he wouldn't allow them to, to pass through peacefully. But at that point, God had given them victory over that king. And so they, uh, they went to the next king of the, the promised land, uh, King Og. And he was defeated and 60 cities with high walls, gates and bars. I mean, not all the, the cities were, had walls and fortresses, but needless to say, there were great walls and great gates that God allowed them to conquer. And so with all of that, they, they didn't feel dismayed. They didn't have fear because they, they trusted God to give them the victory. And so, I just want to end out with this. So, the Lord has a promised land for each and every one of us. And it's right before us. And God says to go in and possess the land which I promised to you, to you and your sons. And so, we shouldn't be afraid of what God has for us, even though what's before us may be um, a great fortress or um, great warriors. So those great warriors may seem intimidating, but the Lord has already promised victory. 
So despite the situation and the, the intimidation, God wants you to go in and possess the land that he promised you. And so that's all I have for, for today's devotional. Thank you for sitting down and listening to the word of God with me. So I want to thank you all for sitting down and listening to this devotional. Uh, there's a lot of great promises in the word of God. And I pray that you would all open up the word and let the word of God lead you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Mm-hmm.